Hello and welcome to Ender Climate. My name is Shalin Verma and today we will be seeing how one can set up a stone crushing unit in India. So stone crushing is an important activity that is engaged in the construction and developmental projects. Crushed stones are used to construct roads, bridges, buildings, flyovers and many development and repair works. A stone crushing unit therefore consists of machines designed to reduce large stones, granite, marble and lime rocks into smaller sizes such as gravel, dust of different sizes. A stone crushing unit is usually set up near rocky and hilly areas, ores, coal mines and quarries. It can be used for crushing coal, granite, limestones, abrasive rocks, basalt, river stone, calcite, glass and ferrous materials. Portable crushing plants are designed for aggregate producers looking for a quick setup of a new plant which can be relocated periodically. Stone crushing can continuously operate for one to two years at a particular position before there is a need for relocation. There is a huge business opportunity for stone crushing units in India. In the last decade, the construction sector has registered a strong growth rate of 7 to 8%. This growth is directly affecting the demand of crushed stones and therefore the need for stone crushing units. Construction and housing are major growth drivers in 40 allied industries including stone crushing industries. Let's understand the working of a stone crushing unit. Crushing plants use extensive equipments like screeners, feeders, conveyors, hoppers, separators and crushers. Big rocks are put into crushers which breaks them into smaller pieces. The crusher conveys the material for secondary crushing before it goes on the vibrating screen. The vibrating screen plant separates the quality and sustainable material into final product. Running a stone crushing unit requires labor and transportation as well. While a crusher is automated, labor intensive work includes carrying the stone from quarry and moving the finished product away from the crushing site to the storage location. Let's see what factors must be considered when setting up a stone crushing unit. So the first factor is the site selection. The site should not be located within an environmentally sensitive area or a prescribed buffer zone such as wetlands, steep slopes and areas that are likely to be affected by natural hazards like inland flooding, landslides and storm surges amongst others. Second one is dust and air emission. Air emission from operations of equipment and exhaust vehicles must be screened. Necessary abatement measures such as reducing the air emission from the plant to comply with the Environmental Protection Standard for Air Regulations 1998 must be observed. The third factor is managing noise pollution from stone crushing plants due to the use of mechanical equipment and electric motors. Necessary precautions therefore must be taken to ensure noise emitted from the unit is within the permissible limits. Next is the disposal of the waste which is generated by the unit such as soil and unusable raw material waste. Safe disposal of such waste like oil, hydrocarbon, oil spills from crushing must also be done. So let's find out what are the licenses required for operating the crusher, screening plant and the storage. A license or NOC is required from the concerned state government to use a stone crusher. The documents needed to obtain this license are the mining lease from the geology and mines unit, the consent certificate from the state pollution control board, copy of the Khasra and the Nazli Naksha from the revenue department, project report approved by authorized and impaneled consultant board, application fees, the consent certificate from SPCB, Stone crushing has now been recategorized under the orange category from the red category. The unit will need a pollution NOC certificate from the respective SPCV or the Pollution Control Committee. NOC for stone crushing are given in two stages that is consent to establish and consent to operate. The unit would also need an environmental clearance. The National Green Tribunal in an order directed that no stone crusher be permitted to operate unless they obtain a proper no objection certificate from the concerned authorities and have an environmental clearance from the competent authority. Some additional licenses are also required by the stone crusher. These include the GST registration certificate, the character certificate from the district administration, mining lease and non-forest land certificate. In the case of non-forest land certificate, which is given under clause 6 of the Forest Amendment Rules 2004. Stone crushing units that seek to use any forest land for non-forestry purpose like stone crushing 
under section 2 of the act are required to make a proposal to the nodal officer of the concerned government of the state or the union territory. The applicant must obtain a non-forest land certificate from the forest and environment department to set up the unit. So setting up the stone crushing unit will be highly profitable if the right location and market is chosen. Along with such business decision, the entrepreneur will also need assistance in applying for these licenses and arranging the documentation which will require guidance in the setup process and help from experts in fulfilling the legalities. And this is where Interclimate can aid your business. At Interclimate, we provide an environmental consultancy service and assistance in licensing and post-compliance services. So that was all for this video. Like and subscribe this video if you found it informative and contact us for any type of business queries that you may have. See you next time with another such video on a new business idea. Thank you.